Scott, how'd you get Zuzi off with? What you, you concentrate on? Concentrating on uh, getting these guys' bodies back fresh. Um, a lot of the guys go uh, give them a couple, gave them a couple of days off. Had a couple of mental days and allowed them to uh, do some recovery and get their bodies back fresh. And also uh, to continue to do some little, little things, you know, to get continue to get better. Was that temptation as a coach to push them in the off week and grind? Yeah. But obviously, you need to recover. Or yeah. is that line? Well, well that's uh, for us. We, we've had uh, we had a series of physical games in a row where the guys really, you know, was physical and you know, and put their bodies through a lot physically. So we uh, wanted to get those guys some time off. Uh, and we, we pushed them a little bit. Once we got going, we pushed them a little bit. But we wanted to get those guys recovered. We got a veteran team, for the most part, with the guys up front and, you know, uh, and, you know the quarterbacks in, in the back. So, you know, it's, typically, you know, you got, you know, some inexperienced guys and some younger guys that don't necessarily know how to handle the, uh, you know, having some days off or whatnot. But with the group we got, you know, a veteran lace team, you know, those guys, uh, we had no issues with those guys understanding when to turn it on. Moving around well, both up, moving around well. How important was it about week just, um, you know, that Garrett's able to kind of play with the first team? And, yeah. You know, a normal. Game. Really came at the right time, honestly, man. You know, just for like, for everybody. Like I said, we've had some physical games in a row where, you know, some guys been, you know, kind of beat up and, you know, guys been playing through it, you know, so it really came at a really good time for guys to get their bodies back right. Really proud of how those guys were able to, you know, even to sustain the level of physicality we played with in those games and also during those games to continue to want to play and, and be out there in the football team. So it really came at a really good time for us to get our, get their bodies back, you know, physically and also just mentally. Neil mentioned to get where you want to be, mm -hmm. you got to be able to throw the football more. Yeah. you got to be a, more of a passing game mm -hmm. team, even though you're still, you know, running yeah. first. What do you do and how do you work on that and how do you make sure that's something you Work it. Just keep working. Just keep working. Keep working the chemistry with the uh, receivers and the quarterbacks. Uh, you know, through our practice, that's what we've done a lot of. We've had some extra days of, uh, you know, practice, you know, with this bye week. And so we've done a lot more throughout the team periods of implementing a couple more pass concepts, a couple more pass plays during those plays. Uh, trying to do a lot pre-practice-wise with the uh, offensive line and the running backs to work on run games. So when we go to the team periods, we can work more pass so we can uh, to work on that chemistry with those guys. Given up yards, but they've caused turnovers. I think they're yeah. the turnover margins. So is that kind of what they do? They kind of try to get you behind and try to pressure you. Is that what they want to do? They do try to get you behind pressure, and also they they do a great job of trying to create those turnovers. You know, they they feed off they feed off that they thrive off that, and that's one thing we've done a phenomenal job of. Those, you know, I talked to offense about this uh, earlier this week. You know, two of the things we wanted to focus on primarily that hurt us. You know, in the last couple of years, we're obviously preaching out penalties. I think right now we're first in this conference in uh, the least amount of penalties, which is really good. We really focused on that, harped on that, and that's on daily. And we really focused on ball security. And we've done a phenomenal job taking care of the football as well. And so we emphasize that absolutely every day. We actually just watched that again today. We, this will be our third, our second time here in the last couple of days uh, watching a, a ball security reel, which showing those guys how those guys go about taking, trying to get the football. So with, throughout practice on our work days, we can work on that. What does it take to be effective and successful um, with play action in your offense? So run, get run the ball, and so we and we are running the football. So you know, we we just got to be able to, we got to be able to throw it and catch it. To be honest with you, because uh, what it, you know the question you asked, like what it takes to be successful with the uh, the play action pass is having a successful run game. We've shown the ability to be able to run the football. So, you know, we're getting a bite from, you know, linebackers in that regard. You know, we just got to be able to throw it and catch it. And say, so, well, like I said, we've done a great job this week of implementing a lot more pass concepts throughout team periods and did a great job. I, and I uh, really praise the guys uh, this morning. We did a great job throwing and catching the ball yesterday. You know, they've got a couple of guys that were in your system. Mm -hmm. Do you have to be mindful of that, knowing your signals, how you practice, how you prepare? Do you have to – Keep that in mind. No, not really, because we've uh, we're always changing those signals, you know, you know, all the time. So you know, not not really. Your thought of the development of some of the young receivers that are playing for you a lot now: yeah. Rodney, Traylon yeah. Ray, Hudson, even yeah. redshirt freshman. Again, even with that bye week, that was very instrumental too. You know, getting those mm -hmm. guys extra work. We've been doing a lot of what we call Monday night football, and mm -hmm. so those guys have been practicing. We also get a little extra work with those guys with the Monday night ball. So those guys just continue to get reps, get looks. You know. Uh, Get used to you know playing you know certain coverage looks and how to adjust to it and, and also just you know just the actual 
you know, the process of getting the signal, getting lined up fast and being able to, you know, not just get lined up fast, but also be able to look at defense and have an idea, you know, what, what route you're going to run and how you're going to adjust your route. And that's been good for those guys. They're playing a lot more confidently right now. Two games, yeah. Nico played two games, and now Garrett's back. I mean, especially if yeah. really came together in this offseason. Yeah, it has been. You know, it has been. That's a, you know, going back and forth. And it hadn't been the same guys. You know, and obviously Nico got a left handed spin on the ball. Garrett's right handed. Garrett threw that thing a little, got a, lot, a little more zip on the ball. And so that's that's been an adjustment. It has been an adjustment. And so, and those guys, they've done a good job, you know, adjusting to it. And like I said, this week, having, you know, an extra, you know, a couple of days of practice and prepare for them. And, like I said, yesterday I thought we threw or we threw the ball and caught the ball really well yesterday. Probably the best I've seen in the last couple of weeks in practice. Getting ready for this uh, this game and you're preparing your guys. What are the points of emphasis that you're telling them this week to get ready for Houston? First of all, I got to execute. We got to execute. They know the plan, a simple plan, run and pass. It's, it's simple. We got to execute the plan. That's first and foremost. Got to execute the plan. And we all talk about before we can win the game, we can't lose the game. So we got to continue to do a great job. You know being disciplined so we don't have to preach that penalties and we got to continue to do a great job taking care of the football. And then guys, uh, we talking about the guys, I've been really emphasizing this the last several days. Guys got to make plays beyond what we can coach. You know, the game plan is simple. You know, we obviously got to be more explosive. The game plan is simple. They know it. They, the confidence is there. You know, they got to have the courage to go out there and take risks and do things beyond what we can coach. With Jaheim and, mm -hmm. and, and Rodney Gallagher a little bit, those yeah. guys need a yeah. space. They are. They actually, they're electric and space, in it, and you see those guys a lot more. They can do some special things with the ball in their hand. Obviously, saw Jaheim do some things, and Rodney's done some good things too in the last game. So you see a lot more of those guys. Along those lines, explosive play, some of that just comes down to breaking a few tackles, right? Absolutely. 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 And we talk about that too. And you know, those four things we talk about all the time and produce and make a miss, break tackles, you're always out the contact, explosive plays. And you're exactly right. We've got to win the one on one battles. And then we also talked about today. They got we got to do a phenomenal job of, you know, creating explosives. Just you know, blocking after the catch when other guys catching the football. You know, we call it activity after the catch. Go block after the catch. Okay, your offensive line is the strength of the team. Absolutely. Uh, you might go without your left side. Though. Yeah. What kind yeah. of adjustments does that force you to make? Uh, not so much personnel wise, but I mean, does it affect play calling? Uh, not schematically, not really. Uh, you know, those guys, both those guys. You know, Nick Malone, you know, he hadn't had as much playing time as, like, Quay Hubbard. Quay Hubbard's obviously had a extensive amount of playing time starting for us last year. And, and Nick Malone's got a lot of work. He's played a lot of ball. So, you know, not really. You know, obviously different players. But in terms of schematically, not, not, not changing anything schematically. Those guys got better to go out there and do it. The season for a young, true freshman. I, I assume that they're starting to get experience. But how big – of a leap can they make as you move into the second half? Like I think a huge. Or a yeah. I think a huge leap. Uh, you know, both of them have. You know, they've got some some playing time, some experience, and you know, it's played in some. Uh, you know, some weight games, obviously, to get his. You know, example, kind of get. You know, whether it be jitters or nervousness or you know whatever that that, that feeling is. Uh, you know, they kind of got that out of the system a little bit, and then we you know we've had success. You know, we come out on the winning end of it, so they're in a good state of mind and. You know, so this bye week come really, really good time where they feel like, man, I've, man, I've done some things, I made some plays, man. So I'm, I'm ready to go and see what else I can go do. I know the goal is to, to improve in areas that you're deficient, but you've got enough games now. Where, you, where do you determine? This is who we are. This mm -hmm. is what we have to be, as opposed to trying to strive. Obviously, you're going to try to continue to strive mm -hmm. in the passing game, but what point is that when you're like, this is who we are? Yeah, well, this, we are a running team. That's who we are. I mean, that, that, that's who we are. It's funny. I mean, White Miles was saying that exactly. He said, man, I love it, Coach. We, you know, to go out there and play the level of physicality and, you know, that we playing with and, and go do, and dominate in the trenches. That's who we are. We're a running football team. That's our identity. We got no issues. That, you know, sometimes it's certain, you know, in the past, you'd be like, well, I don't know who we are. Who are we? We are a running football team. We uh, we blue collar. We, phys we physical. We play tough. Those guys strain. But we got to be able to, you know, pass the ball, you know, and take some shots and make some plays down the field. And we got receivers that can go throw. And I told the guys today we got great thrower, we got great runners, we got great catchers, we got great throwers. You know, so we got the ability to go do it. We just got to be able to do it. And when that, when the opportunity comes their way, they got to make that play. But that's who we are. We're running football team. That's our identity. 
Uh, but we got to be able to pass the football, you know, to lighten up the box numbers and, and also just give us a better chance to, you know, shorten these drives. You know, we got explosiveness and we got playmakers and a talent to not take, you know, 10, 12 plays to go score on the drive, you know. That's better than not knowing who you are after yeah, five there's games. No question. So there's no question. Point. There's no question. You're absolutely yeah. right. What do you think has helped the offense back from being more explosive so far this season than you could pinpoint? Well, we've got to be able to pass the ball. We haven't been able to pass the ball as good as we want to. And also, from a run game standpoint, we got to be able to break more tackles, you know. And then it's one to two reads a game that we're missing, you know, in terms of our discipline, where they, those you, you can't see it. You're from the sideline, you don't see it until it's on film. And, you know, the back has missed one to two reads a game. That's a huge one. That's a explosive play or a possible touchdown. And those are the ones you can't miss. You know, you're going to get your four, you're going to get your five, you get two, get, get three. But then you get an opportunity to hit that fifth, that fifth yard, you can't miss it. And for you know, last two games we missed one or two of them, so that can't happen. When you guys call, you know, something like a QB sneak and push push, or like a wing sneak, like you all did uh, last week, do you all see someone like a Traylon Davis? His eyes kind of light up because he might not be the production tight end, so to speak, but he's big on those types of plays. Absolutely, man. His his ability to be able to go block and, and move people at it, you know, and against their will is it, huge for us. Uh, but and we try to find a way to u- utilize all those guys, utilize their strengths, and, you know, and that's what we're trying to do in that area. You know, obviously as you get closer to the end zone, it's tougher to get in that bad for everybody's all packed in. So, you know, we got to do a great job being disciplined, playing great pad level. But, you know, Traylon's uh, obviously, you know, phenomenal. And, you know, in production, obviously, he ain't the, you know, true pass catch tight end. He can do some things with the ball, you know. He may not go as far, but he does a great job blocking for us, and we need him to continue in that role. For a while now, I'm surprised he called it, but uh, for a while now, <laughs> we didn't execute and get in the end zone, so you might be that might be the last of the week. See, <laughs> yeah, how often do um defensive linemen hold and get called for every it? play? Every play. <laughs> now, does it get called? No. <laughs> I tell you what, speaking of that, man, uh, it's funny because I, I got to have better body language on sideline when it happened. I thought it was a hold against us, but uh, Zach Frazier did. He did a phenomenal job. Uh, I don't. I, this first time I ever seen uh. I want to say it's one of the first times, at least in a long time, I've seen uh, defense get called for holding. We got it called twice the other day. That was a f- f- savvy play by the center. Really good savvy play by the center. That's something you could never call to during a game like That's that. something like, you know, doing something beyond what your coach should do right there. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it never happens, but it also always happens. Did yeah, never. Can you ever plant the seed with an official during a game? Say it one more time. Can you ever, like, plant the seed with an official during a game, like, hey, watch out for this? Yeah, well. Yes and no, cause it, it go both ways, you know. All right, I, guess, <laughs> yeah. I guess this is my question: like, how did that happen? Like, one, not just one guy, but two in a game where you might not see two in a whole year. Was it that obvious? I don't. Th- I don't know if it was, the first one was definitely that obvious. It, if you know, if, when you see, you see it on film, it's definitely it's definitely that obvious. Uh, and a lot of it, a lot of it too. You know, I think Zach Frazier did a phenomenal job. He strained so he strained so hard, and when he plays, he strains so hard. It's hard not to like it. And like he's straining so hard, it's hard not to look at him and say he's holding that guy. So I think the you know the level of strain and effort that he plays with you know puts the line in a position where they can get called for holding. Because like on that first one, it was so obvious. I mean, he was straining his butt off trying to go get that linebacker, and he just couldn't go, he couldn't he couldn't get him. And you clearly see his jersey tug. And so the level of strain he plays with, and the effort he plays with, you know, puts the line in a position to get that called on. This week, how, how Huge. banged up was he? Huge. He needed he needed it big time in every way. He's a new person, like smiling, talking. And so mm-hmm. he needed it big time. That was huge for him. Okay, thank you, coach. Thank you all.